One of the main assumptions in technical analysis is that price moves in trends. In an uptrend, price makes higher highs and higher lows, and in a downtrend, price makes uh, lower lows and lower highs. So in this chart, I'm showing quite well all the up and down swings in uptrends, up and down swings in downtrends. And as you can see, since the beginning of the bull market in March 2009, the sequence of higher highs and higher lows is still holding. So as long as key support of 2,532 points holds, the bull market is still in place. So given that the price setup is still holding, why is all the fuss and cautiousness around the market? So let's put a little bit of flavor uh, and add some indicators to see why the red lights are flashing and why investors are nervous. Here I'm showing a 30-year monthly chart, quarterly chart actually, on the S&P 500. And what we can observe is that for the past three years, we had three bull markets, which ran for nine, nine years, three months, uh, five years, and currently the longest bull market, nine years and six months. Uh, on the first bull market we've seen, we've added 428%. On the second bull market leading to the GFC top, we added 105%. And the current, current pool market advanced with 341 points. What we can see also is that uh, during the two bull markets, on average, uh, the market declined 51 to 58%, so roughly 55%. What is interesting to observe that the average length of the bull market is around seven years and the average length of uh, the bear market is two years. What is also very interesting to observe that most major market tops and bottoms occurred in the months of, months of October and March. Just a foot for thought, I'm not drawing a strong conclusion here. We'll move to the next slide where we will examine the Elliott wave uh, mapping. Given that markets are cyclical, moves in cycle, cycles, Elliott wave theory is trying to map those cycles. And the theory here is that uh, bull and bear trends are unfolding in pipe wave structure. So this is a 20-year uh, monthly chart again. As you can see, during the dot-com crash, price action unfolded in pipe waves. Uh, after that, the bull market lasted uh, and unfolded uh, in pipe waves fashion as well. The GFC uh, bear market also unfo unfolded in pipe waves. And since March 2009, the clear mapping is that we are in the final wave five. Is that the top of wave five? It's quite hard, hard to, um, to conclude, but given that the third wave, which is the wave I'm showing here, it's in theory the longest, there is not much room on the upside for the current and final wave five. What is also interesting to observe uh, is from the RSI indicator. Usually market tops and bottoms occur from extremely overbought and oversold readings. So um, in the first bear market, we had a divergence between the RSI and the price. And once the RSI broke below its key support, as I'm showing here, we've seen a bear, two-year bear market unfolding. A bull market started from oversold readings in the RSI and lasted uh, for about five years. Then during the GFC again, we had the same setup, bearish divergence forming on the RSI, then RSI breaking below its last support, which came pretty much very close to the top of uh, the market. So that was a very good indication we are topping. At the bottom of March 2009, RSI came to extremely oversold levels and once it turned back above the 30%, most probably around that point here, we were already in a bull market. So what we have here since uh, January 2018, again, extremely oversold readings, which we've seen for the first time since the bull market started in March 2009. Again, we have the second prerequisite, which is a bearish divergence. And uh, the most alarming part is that the RSI broke below its last support. 
So three major tops, we are not in a top yet, it's not confirmed, but the two previous major tops came from extremely oversold readings. They had a bearish divergence and they broke below key support levels on the RSI indicator. We are having this setup. The only thing holding so far is the key support level of 5,332 points. Adding a little bit uh, more detail uh, how and when market top occurs, I have a lot of questions from the network and lately from clients directly asking where the market is heading. So I just want to zoom in three important potential areas of reversals. So let's look at the dot-com crash. We've had a strong market uh, leading prior to that. Once we got into extremely oversold RSI readings, we had extreme volatility entering the market. We had a short-term correction declining 13.72%, then a small rebound where the market made a lower high. Lower high means selling pressure is kicking in and it shows with the market. Where I want to draw your attention is the RSI breaking below its last support. That came pretty much in the middle of the range and that was indication that momentum is weakening, although the price structure is still holding. Inevitably, the price uh, broke below its last support in 2000 and a two-year bear market unfolded. Let's go fast track to the GFC high. The RSI reached extremely overbought readings for the first time. And if you remember uh, that scary episode in August when everyone was talking that the bear market has started, we had 11.83% decline just to see the market gathering momentum, overshooting and making a higher high, exceeding the August high with 1.35%. And then, We've seen a breakout while the market was so strong, the RSI wasn't confirming and we actually saw a break below long-term uptrend line on the RSI. Remember that's a leading indicator and usually gives us earlier warnings than the price itself. We had a bearish divergence and finally we had a break below support in RSI. So our warning came in the middle of the range that a major market top is in the making. Where we are here, very similar situation. In January, it's just a coincidence, but an interesting one. The market corrected this year 11.83%, exactly the same amount as August 2007. What we've seen it's a strong rally unfolding throughout the year, but we are only making a marginally higher high, just like in 2007. This time, the market was a bit stronger. We posted, we exceeded the previous high with 2.36%. Where the red flags are coming? Bearish divergence from extremely oversold levels not seen in the 20 or 30 year charts so far. So this tells me the market is extremely expensive. Second concern, support on RSI was broken showing momentum is really deteriorating. Third concern, long term, nine year uptrend line in the RSI was broken earlier in the week, but the price is still holding. So um, where to from here? We'll add, uh, before we, uh, we conclude, we'll add some Fibonacci uh, retracements, which I consider as very powerful uh, indicators uh, to highlight turning points. First slide is showing a Fibonacci retracements uh, drawn from the dot-com crash. As you can see, the 100% retracement coincided with the GFC top and the 261.6% retracement ratio highlights that around 2,900 900 points, there is a very strong possibility another major uh, point is forming. Drawing another Fibonacci retracements, this is from uh, the GFC high to the GFC low. 
What we can see is from the 261.8 Fibonacci retracement that above 3,000, the market is looking extremely expensive and it's very vulnerable to enter and shift, uh, to enter a bear market and completely shift in the direction. So I've showed you all the red flashing lights, but remember that all those slides I showed you from uh, our presentation from slide two onwards are only ancillary tools which help measure momentum, cyclicality, seasonality, and give us potential price projections. Price itself remains the most important thing which determine the states of the market and the trend. And as long as key support of 2,532 points holds, we are in a bear market despite weakening momentum. And this will be the ultimate answer to the question, are we in a bear market or this is a bull market correction? So far at this, at this juncture in time, we are in a bull market correction and we are looking for different bank opportunities. My strategy is changing to more short term given all the red flashing flights. So my focus would be more tactical, shorter term oriented, given that we are late in the cycle, we are approaching the end of wave five, and actually anything can happen at any time from here. We know that the critical months are March and October. So if we stage a strong rebound from here, we could be safe until March, I would presume, that's a, just a presumption, but until the uptrend holds, I'm chasing buying opportunities. Quickly, mo quickly moving to uh, the Australian market, I'm not going to go in such a great details because the analysis and the setup in price is uh, very similar. We are still currently in a correction mode. Key level to watch is support of 5,629. Uh, as long as that support holds, this is a primary support, we are in a bull market and uh, the current pullback is presenting a buying opportunity. If you recall, two days ago, I wrote uh, again a piece on oil. I've been following very closely uh, the price action in oil and around $76, I sent out a piece warning that um, a big decline is coming just uh, due to the fact that the last high was marginally higher and the RSI was overbought and I noted a triple bearish divergence. In my last notes, I highlighted the importance of key, of key support around 63 US dollars, which we discussed that it gets broken, it will uh, trigger further weakness. We are entering a bear market in oil and uh, my price target of $58 was exceeded. So while price of oil is in a bear market, uh, uh, I see a very strong evidence that we are likely to rebound strongly in the short term. We have the RSI and the MACD indicators in extremely oversold levels and uh, the bottom around $55 coincides with uh, the December 2016 high. So I'm expecting to see a strong rebound from here in the short term. Initial upside price target is 62 to $63. However, given the recent volatility in the oil um, uh, market, we can see this level exceeded. The stocks of interest. First, outside petroleum, we have an accumulate on the stock. We've seen during the current price correction, the price declining to 61.8 Fibonacci retracement ratio, which is likely to act as a support in the short term. I see a quite good probability of the price rebounding to $35. However, in percentage term, the return is less than 10%. So I'm rating the stock accumulate. My highest conviction buy for the day from the oil and gas space is oil search. We've seen price breaking below support. Now the current correction is also sitting next to 61.8 Fibonacci retracement ratio. So around 6.30 the stock is looking really cheap and potentially having a good support here. Encouraging bullish divergence between the price and the RSI. 
and extremely oversold readings on the MACD indicator, triple bullish divergence on the stochastic indicator. You're not going to see this very often. It's actually very, very rarely we see triple divergence between stochastics. So very comfortable to go aggressive on all search and buy at current price levels. Initial upside target is $8.25. However, that level could be exceeded. BHP Billiton, if you recall my last piece a um, few weeks ago, I was expecting to see resistance around $35 arising. And the price is still currently trading in a correction mode but it is approaching key support around 31 levels. This level is likely to hold, so I'm beginning uh, to warm up and I'll be looking to accumulate in the low $30. Upside price target again remains at 35. Senex Energy, another one, Adrian favorites as well. We've seen a strong uh, decline to previous uh, key uh, support around 37 cents. I'm seeing a, a bullish divergence between the price and the RSI, extremely oversold MACD readings, so I'm very comfortable to buy around current price levels. First price target is 44 cents, however, medium term, that level also could be exceeded. And last but not least, because most probably those stocks are in every client's portfolios. You recently most probably saw a piece of me talking about the bear markets in the four major banks. Nothing has changed since our last update in the long term. I'll only show you in greater details the structure in Westpac, uh, simply because it's one of uh, the widely held um, banks across the portfolios. We had a first warning signal with a head and shoulders pattern in uh, 2015. So pretty much since the end of 2015, Westpac is trading in a bear trend. Another bearish de uh, development we have, if you look at the primary structure, the longer term, we have a lower high forming on the chart in 2017. Break below key support on uh, the 10-year weekly chart, which suggests that long term, Westpac could drop to $21. Tactically, however, we see a quite good opportunity. For the past year, price is unfolding within the boundaries of a downtrend channel. And uh, the current short-term correction after the stock went ex-dividend is approaching its channel, channel line crossing at $24, which is like, likely to act as a dynamic support. And we are likely to see strong buying interest arising. RSI is confirming, short-term short RSI is approaching oversold levels, so strong buying interest is likely to arise very soon. On the upside, price target is $28, so we have 10% plus uh, from current prices. And the last talk of today, uh, for today is uh, National Bank, very similar setup to Westpac. We only just broke the key support this week. Um, technically still in a bear trend, uh, the stock dropped 37.5% uh, since its 2015 high. We know that any weakness greater than 20% defines a bear market. Again, longer term, we could see the stock declining further to $21, so we are not recommending long, buying with um, long-term uh, expectations. Our call is tactical, short-term. We have a conviction that NEP is going to bounce. Look at the uh, weekly RSI, it's oversold, the stochastic is oversold. So I'm expecting to see a strong rebound to $27.50 in the short term. That's all for me for today, sorry I've been so long.